Bringing consistent, high-quality content to the masses is, for some people, quite challenging, and others, nearly impossible. Although it's not a problem I've ever had. The fragrance industry, like any other industry, is both extremely competitive and sometimes quite ruthless. It's both an art and a science to keep creating something that is relevant, modern, and mainstream, that is consistently valued. The good news coming from this video is that most fragrance houses have actually managed to have multiple hits over a period of years. But there have been some fragrance companies that have released one extremely successful fragrance and they've never been able to reach the same heights as that one fragrance and they're constantly, unfortunately, in the shadow of it. Here are 10 fragrance companies that will one hit wonders. Number 10, Tommy Hilfiger, Tommy Cologne. Even to my dying breath, I will still be defending this sweet, light, citrus aromatic fragrance. A staple for young men in their teens and early twenties, it's cheap, reliable, and smells fantastic for a fragrance in its price range. I love the bitter green apple, complemented with fresh muted mint and lavender. It smells innocent and fun, and brings the user back to a simpler time. Surprisingly, even after all of the more expensive and complicated niche fragrances I've smelt, I will still defend this fragrance. Will I be defending any of the other Tommy Hilfiger's mind? No. With an issue that we're finding a lot on this list, over-reliance on flankers the same way film production companies rely on sequels, Tommy Hilfiger has been stuck in first gear since 1996 with their fragrance line. There's been many attempts to create new fragrance lines, even as recent as this year, 2020, with impact. But there wasn't really any impact made at all. Unfortunately, it's the same tired aromatic citrus or aromatic fruity scent which is out of date and not what people are desiring. Tommy Hilfiger are still making fragrances for the late 1990s or early 2000s audience. Added to that, their over-reliance on low-quality synthetic aromatic ingredients and their fragrance lines are becoming a boat without a paddle. Tommy Cologne still does very well in nostalgia sales, but nostalgia seems to be the only thing that is keeping their fragrance line afloat for now. Number nine, Lancome Hypnos for men. Lancome have had quite a few successes in their women's fragrance collection, Poem, Hypnos, and their most successful line of late, Le Vie Est Belle. Their men's fragrance line, however, has not been as fruitful. You get the feeling that they are simply not as invested in creating men's fragrances, which is completely their choice. They have shifted, like many other companies recently, to promoting more genderless and unisex fragrances, but the one true success that they had with their male fragrance range was the male interpretation of Hypnos. Hypnos Om. What a beautiful bottle design. And with master perfumier Maurice Roussel creating a fragrance very much of the time, riding on the high success of Durom and Durom Intense, he made a metrosexual light cardamom floral scent that was very successful. There were a couple of flankers that did not get anywhere near as much attention as the original fragrance, and as time has gone by and fragrances moved on, it's become somewhat forgotten. But there was indeed a time where Lancome Hypnos for Men hypnotised us all. Number eight, eight and Bob. Eight and Bob. One of the things that they teach you in advertising and selling is to try not to go for a one-note gimmick. The creators of Eight and Bob obviously didn't get that memo and have created an advertising campaign that is extremely repetitive. Eight and Bob is a charming fragrance and an equally charming story of John F. Kennedy visiting the French Riviera and meeting perfumier Albert Fouquet who gave the future president a sample of his cologne he was working on. Kennedy then went back to America and sent Fouquet a letter saying how much he loved the cologne, and asked could he be sent eight samples for his friends, and if there was enough left, one for Bob. Albert Fouquet, not certain how to take this request, sent samples and labelled the package eight and Bob. This fragrance and its story surged in 2012, and Eight and Bob became quite the sentimental phenomenon in the fragrance world. A place of fragrance history with a charming story that we could all be a part of. But all good stories do come to a close, and as Eight and Bob's fragrance, which is in my estimation a very pleasant fragrance but nothing groundbreaking, as it faded a little bit out of the spotlight, suddenly we got Eight and Bob Egypt, and Eight and Bob 
memoirs de mystique. The dislikes were pretty brutal, and the vibe of these releases felt somewhat cynical, and as though it was milking the success of the original fragrance and the original story. Added to that, some of these fragrances still had Albert Fouquet as the perfumier, even though they were new releases and Fouquet had died in a car accident in 1939. Either way, for one year, Eight and Bob was quite a big thing in the fragrance community and somewhat in retail also. But since then, it has diminished and faded in popularity, despite many attempts to recapture the audience's imagination. Number seven, Burberry London. Burberry has had its image problems, and the biggest being in the early to mid noughties when Burberry became the poster image for chavs, football hooligans, and general British misfits. The Burberry Czech image became synonymous with the low income British subculture, and has had difficulty recovering in the UK ever since. Their fragrance line has never been the greatest, and they have had some mediocre fragrances that they have sold, like Brit and touch, and the less that we speak about Mr. Burberry, the better, but they never managed to grab the heights of popularity and stardom as London. The line has tried to have a revamp recently, even going as far as having Francis Kurjan as their perfumier. Alas, it remains that Burberry's one and only true hit is that of London. Smelling like everything from a lovely Cuban cigar to a piney Christmas tree, this fragrance certainly has something for a lover of autumn and winter cold weather fragrances. Number six, Rochas Man. Now to give credit where credit is due, Rochas has had some success in the 1970s with Eau de Rochas. It was a well-received citrusy chypre that had its fans, no doubt, but the fragrance that put Rochas on the map and that they have never been able to outdo is of course simply Rochas Man. With a rather memorable bottle shape and a lovely creamy lavender and coffee combination, this made for a memorable yet wearable cheapie. It certainly had its critics and naysayers, but its popularity hasn't ever really declined, and it's remained the only big mainstream hit for Rochas, who have kept throwing things at the wall to see what sticks, and it still hasn't got anything else to work, so the lava lamp is still their bestseller. Number five, Isimiyaki, L'Odyssee. In 1994, Isimiyaki releases L'Odyssee, and it was a huge, successful hit. Great! But instead of trying to do, well, frankly, anything else, they were just content with flanker after flanker based on the same fizzy ginger DNA with several hundred summer variations and spin-offs like Nuit de Isi, and it all became very oversaturated and sameish. The problem was that Everything that they did since was compared to L'Odyssee, which was one of the most iconic and warm fragrances of the 1990s. They were damned if they did, and they were damned if they didn't. If they did something too similar, it, it was considered boring and passé. If they do something too different, a novel, and it becomes suddenly unengaging and alienating. One of the fragrances that could have become a bona fide, mega mega hit was Noir Ombre but they discontinued it. Why, Isamiyaki? I don't know if I can ever forgive you. Why? Number four, a controversial one here, Jean-Paul Gaultier Lamal. Now, I know what you're going to say. Well, what about Ultramal and what about Eau Fresh? And those are lovely. But now that Ultramal is not being discontinued, it is not being discontinued, but it is being limited in its distribution. Showcases that it wasn't really the hit that we thought that it was. It's sort of like the Michael Jackson Thriller problem. Thriller was the biggest hit of all time. It still hasn't been beaten. And now because of YouTube and illegal downloads, it probably never will. When Bad came out, it was a huge hit, but it was in the constant shadow of Thriller. Lamal was at one point in time, and it was a long point in time, the most successful fragrance release ever. Nothing could compare to it. So in a way, this makes Jean-Paul Gaultier a one-hit wonder almost by default. La Malle is an absolute gargantuan of a fragrance, and it would take something absolutely, truly special for Jean-Paul Gaultier to outlive the shadow of La Malle. They attempted it with Corco Rico a few years back, but it just didn't work out. La Malle, for them, is still truly their only hit. Number three, Yope Om. Yope Om was released in 1989, 
and was actually way ahead of its time. The thought of this fragrance DNA being around in the early 90s is mind-boggling when you actually start to realise that the super sweet Tonka vanilla sandalwood type of fragrance have only really come into popularity in only the past five years. Now we're getting fragrances like Yop Om every week, and they're more popular and relevant than ever. However, the classic trend of companies doing endless flankers again and again, like Yop Om Black King Yop Om Chill Out. Well, there's just a lot. And in the end, this company was just simply spinning its wheels. Now, to be fair, Yop have attempted to create new lines like Yop Jump and most recently Yop Wow, which had some marginal success. Unfortunately, like Lamal with Jean Paul Gaultier, Yop still lives under the monstrous shadow of Yop Om. Number two. Guy LaRoche, Dracar Noir. Sent from heaven, his only son, fragrant Jesus, came down from the mountain and stated, Sir friends, as you Jesus, Dracar Noir, man, it's sick, right? And all of his disciples agreed. Dracar Noir has been one of the most successful cult fragrances since it was released. It's a fragrance that is popular in more places than others, and its popularity does vary from year to year, but it's most certainly a steady and consistent seller. One of the most interesting things about this release is that Guy LaRoche seems to be self-aware that this was going to be their only one true big hit. There were only two flankers that were released before Guy LaRoche knew the cards that they had been dealt and decided to fold. Because of this, however, I feel that Dracar Noir has in fact continued to flourish. Its legacy has not been diluted by endless flankers, making the line look as though it's fighting to stay relevant and current. Instead, Dracar Noir has stayed true to itself, and just been a late 1980s classic that still resonates with a lot of people. Yes, Dracar Noir is a one-hit wonder from the 1980s, and it has aged, but it did so gracefully and with dignity unlike the number one on this list. Number one, the biggest one-hit wonder from Fragrance Company has got to be Davidoff, Cool Water. But George, George, what, what about Champion and the game? The game! Wasn't that a hit, George? It looks like a stick of poker chips. Uh, uh, no. Anyway, in 1988, Cool Water made its debut and immediately drew comparisons to Green Irish Tweed. There are reasons for this, which is an old age story and we've covered it before, so we won't get into that. But yes, of course, it was a hit. A mega, mega hit that's still talked about today. However, Davidoff wanted to milk this cow. In fact, they wanted to clone this cow and as many times as they could and just... I, I don't know where this metaphor is going. The point is, is that there is a ton of bloody flankers. Cool Water Wave, Cool Water Night Dive, Hot Water, Lukewarm Water, Gamer Bath Water, and finally, darling, my water's just broken, fetch the ambulance. There's so many water-based flankers released, I'm surprised that United Utilities didn't send David off an invoice. But no matter their attempts, the original Cool Water was still seen in the public eye to some, as the only real Davidoff fragrance that was released. Alas, Cool Water is truly Davidoff's one hit wonder, and every half assed flanker and every bland fragrance with a gimmick bottle that they release only solidifies that fact. And that's the list. Did I miss any out? Are there any fragrance companies that you know that only had one big hit and then could never, ever get to that height again? Anyway, if you enjoyed this list and you want to see more of this type of content, please hit subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload. Anyway, I'm the Fragrance Price. Thanks again. I'll see you soon.